so today we are going to be speaking about the poltergeist curse. So this occurred in 1982, 1986 and 1988 which was the original trilogy and also some strange happenings happened with the newer reboot in 2015 so we're going to be speaking about those today. So Dominique Dunn who played the older sister Dana Freeling she had been living with her boyfriend who was physically and emotionally abusive and he came to see her on October 30th and decided that he wanted to get back with her so he pleaded with her, begged her to get back with him but she wasn't having any of it because she was sick of being pushed around basically. So the conversation didn't go the way he wanted and so he snapped and strangled her. So he strangled her for four to six minutes in her own driveway and then drove off. This was John Sweeney, he was an LA chef and her neighbour actually discovered her in the driveway and called an ambulance. So she went to hospital and it was put into a coma to save her life um, and sadly she passed away um, four days later. He was sentenced to six and a half years However, he only uh, actually served three years and eight months, which, to be honest, I don't really think that six and a half years was enough for a murder. He, it was deemed as um, manslaughter, but if you're going to strangle someone, I don't think that's manslaughter. I think that's a crime of passion, which is at least second degree murder. So, But whatever, I'm not the judge. So that's that one. Heather O'Rourke as well, she was the little girl who played Carol Ann in the original trilogy. She started filming when she was six years old and finished in the third film when she was 12. So she sadly passed away on an operating table. She had gone into septic shock. She had been diagnosed with the flu a day before and she had a bowel obstruction that had gone unnoticed. So she became very poorly, very quickly. Um, and she actually had a cardiac arrest on the way to the hospital. Now the person who was with her in the car, I'm guessing it was a family, managed to revive her. And then a helicopter was called to airlift her to a specialist hospital where she was rushed into emergency surgery, but sadly they couldn't save her because the toxins had already been released into the bloodstream. So sadly, she died on the table. So Julian Beck, he was 60 years old. He played a cane in Portuguese 2. Um, so he battled cancer for 18 months and sadly lost the battle and died in 1985. Not as unusual as some of the previous ones, but still worth a mention. And it's the same with this man, um, Will Samson. He was 53. He played Taylor in Portuguese 2. He had a heart and lung transplant. And sadly, due to post-operative complications, he ended up dying from kidney failure and a bunch of other stuff. Again, not as unusual as some of the others, but still worth a mention. Uh, Richard Lawson, he played Ryan in the original. He boarded a flight 405 to Cleveland. So he was sat in his seat and an air stewardess came over and recognised him and asked him to bump up to first class. Obviously he agreed, he's going to deny first class. So unfortunately the plane actually crashed due to a failed takeoff and out of 51 passengers, 27 died, so that's just one person over over half. Um, and the people sat on his original row before he bumped off to first class actually died. So if he wouldn't have changed seats, he could have been one of those people, which is really weird. Um, Lou Perryman, so he was 68. He played Pugsley, who was a construction worker in the film. He didn't play a major part, but he was attacked and murdered in his own home with an axe. Uh, Oliver Robbins, who played Robbie Freeling, he was attacked by a mechanical clown on set. So basically the clown 
was meant to um, be chasing him and grab him and it was meant to look like a struggle but unfortunately the clown malfunctioned and actually began strangling him and the casting crew all thought he was acting and it was all fine because it was meant to show, show a struggle until he actually started turning blue and then they had to get the clown off him. Uh, he is still alive today which is nice um, but still creepy as fuck. So Jo Beth Williams, who played the mother, she acted in the famous skeleton scene where it's still questionable as to whether the skeletons were real or not because they have never confirmed or denied whether they were or not, but apparently they were real because that was a lot cheaper than buying plastic or rubber skeletons at the time. So she said that she felt nervous and odd on set every single day. And she said that she returned home from work and all of her paintings in her house, which she had a lot, were crooked or some of them had come off the wall. So she said that she used to go home from set and she used to straighten them all out and put them back on the wall. And then in the morning, she'd check them and make sure that they were all straight, all not crooked, all back on the wall. And then she'd go to work and come home and the same thing had happened again. So she'd have to go through her house and do it all again, which is really, really, really weird. So James Kahn, who wrote the novel, so he had a really strange lightning strike. So according to him, he said he wrote the line, lightning streaked the sky, and then a lightning strike hit his house. So apparently it shot the front of his air conditioner unit off, which hit him in the back. And then apparently all the lights went out and then all of the video game systems in his entire house turned on and started playing themselves. I don't even know what I'd do in that situation. That's just weird. And then Gil Keenan directed the 2015 reboot. So they said that there were strange equipment, equipment failures uh, on a specific plot of land and that the house that he stayed in at the time was haunted. So obviously he had to stay in a house while he was filming because he's originally from LA um, and apparently the house that he was staying in he saw a female figure in a black dress and apparently she used to follow him to and from set. Apparently she didn't follow him home to LA which is lucky for him but that's still really creepy. Um, and then some crazy couple decided that they wanted something haunted from the set. I don't know how to help these people, <laughs> but they decided they wanted something from the set. So they actually <clears throat> bought a doll that Heather O'Rourke had played with on the set. So they said that once they received this item, this doll, um, troubling on traumatic times befell their family. Um, they said that the family had become ill, uh, mentally ill as well. Uh, they'd become um, stressed out that some uh, family members had fallen ill with disease and um, apparently there was a lot of financial woes involved um, so basically the family uh, got sage and things and read up online how to cleanse the house and so they, they, they did they tried to cleanse the house but apparently the male of the couple when he said that he was cleansing the house he felt strange and dizzy and he nearly fell and it really badly injured himself because the, apparently he was near the table so he would have hit the corner on his head. How true that is, I don't know, but that's what he claims. Um, so now they got the they got a uh, glass case blessed by a priest and they keep it in a glass case to prevent it from doing any more harm. So a bit like Annabelle, if you've seen that film or The Conjuring, it's a little bit like that. So yeah, some crazy stuff. It's pretty weird. Um, but I really hope you liked this video. And if you did, give me a thumbs up. And please let me know in the comments if you've ever had any weird paranormal experiences. And I will see you next time.